Welcome to the 30 minute acrylic portrait where we paint an acrylic portrait in about a half an hour. Glad to have you here. Uh, look forward to spending the next 30 minutes or so with you teaching you how to paint an a la prima acrylic portrait. Something simple, something to kind of break you out of a rut artistically um, and just you know, give you an idea of what you could maybe do for a larger painting, develop your skills at getting a little bit faster at your portraits. Um, so let's have some fun here. We're going to work on a beach scene today. And this is uh, actually off of a reference photo, based off of a reference photo um, from a trip to Florida. Uh, my daughter was uh, building a sandcastle and uh, just a fun time you're staying with friends and uh, kind of had a, a beach in their backyard, just a wonderful thing. And um, she was able to go to the beach and make a sandcastle. I just love the picture. I love the, uh, the lighting, uh, the, the contrast of the shadow on the sandcastle and how she's just kind of really focused on her work there. So I have this canvas, this uh, 11 by 14, or I'm sorry, 8 by 10 canvas uh, canvas board pre-toned so it's got kind of a, a warm gray tone to it which matches the sand tone so that's already done and then we're going to be diving in and working on this painting so um, here's the colors that I have today I have raw umber dark burnt sienna raw sienna ultramarine blue alizarin crimson pyro red orange Indian yellow titanium white do some hot pink there from a different painting. I don't think I'll be using it today, but it's on my palette. And I have an assortment of brushes, just some various flats, rounds, and filberts, ranging from uh, three quarter inch down to uh, size zero or an ot brush. So various size brushes. Um, before we start, I'd like to encourage you to pick up my free gift. I have a PDF guide you can download. It will teach you how to paint better skin tones. It's called Fix Muddy Skin Tones in Your Acrylic Portrait. To get that free guide, go to realisticacrylic.com slash fix dash muddy dash skin tones. Uh, that's also going to be in the video description below and the top comment. You can pick that guide up and it'll give you several concrete tips on how to fix those muddy skin tones, how to paint more convincing uh, areas of blending, uh, from a dark value to a light value. Uh, so pick that up right now. It's going to help you a lot in your portrait painting. My free gift to you just to say thank you for watching this video. Okay, so let's dive in here. Um, I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes so you can see that I am doing this live a la prima and it's not edited. So let's set that up. Oh, and let's dive in here with a word of prayer as well. Father, I ask that you would bless this portrait. Help me to be able to paint this well. Bless all the students that are watching, Lord. I pray that you would um, just, yeah, help me, Lord, because apart from you, I can do nothing. With you, I can do all things. Help the students to learn some uh, techniques that they can use in their portrait painting. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to get started here with uh, just kind of blocking in the overall composition. Um, so I'm going to take some raw umber dark and a little bit of titanium white. Just mix that together. Let's spray this palette really quick. And let's zoom in here on the canvas. There we go. Okay, so this should be good. I just want to block in roughly, you know, where the grass is going to be. Somewhere, somewhere about here, I think, will be good. Maybe a little higher, maybe just a little higher. We'll just roughly block that in there. And then um, I have my daughter right here, the figure right here. Somewhere right about here. Might want to go just a little lighter. I 
I just want to get the overall position of the head and the gesture of the form as quickly as I can. With the shadow here going behind. And of course, the sand castle. Okay, we have the sand castle. Get that in there. Composition is just a little bit different than what I have on my tablet because the format of this image is a little different size. All right. Okay, now that that's done, let's uh, block in a little bit of color for the grass on the top. Lock in a little bit of the color for the grass in the top. We'll take some ultramarine blue, add that to this titanium white and raw umber dark, a little bit of raw sienna. It's just a very pale, pale color. Maybe just a touch of Indian yellow, and then a little more ultramarine blue, and titanium white. Lock this in up here. And just using some kind of crisscross strokes, ver mostly vertical, just to convey that idea of grass. We'll reload the brush, and bring it across, and then Go vertically again. And then let's uh, get a couple of smaller deviations in there. We'll use some ultramarine blue, a little bit of raw umber dark. And what we want to do is just get some slightly darker areas in there. Just to imagine there's some little Oh, recessed blades of grass and shadows in there. We're just going to put them in a few particular spots, trying to not make this too patterned. It's always a temptation to do that. Have a couple areas where there's no uh, shadows. I just want to have a few little shadows on the bottom. That's good. And then uh, we'll use a little bit of matte medium to thin this out. I have to wipe my brush on a rag and then we'll just put a few little blades and what a little titanium white to this in raw sienna just get that color a little lighter so optically it can blend in we just then suggest some of this uh, flowing down into the sand yeah we had a wonderful time on this trip and we're actually going to be going again to the same place. Uh, Naples, Florida, we'll be going to the same place again, uh, leaving just in a couple of days. So plan on making more memories, taking some more photographs. And uh, by the time this video posts, we probably will be down there already. So, all right, so just a few little stragglers of grass here few little stragglers. Now let's go ahead and put in a little bit of texture here for the sand. We'll take some titanium white, a little bit of romber dark, ultramarine blue, a touch of alizarin crimson. Get a little more romber dark just to balance that out. And 
and a bit more ultramarine blue. It's kind of making a dirty gray color. And then we'll take, let's see, this brush here, and we'll just kind of put in a couple of shadow shapes. A little more titanium white. And yeah, we just wanted a little bit darker than what's currently there. Okay, so a little more ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson. And we put in a few little shadow shapes here. All right, just get in a little bit of texture here for this. And I do want a little more blue. It's a real balancing act, getting just that right color. Okay, a little bit of texture here, just some dimples in the sands showing that there's been footprints and people walking along the beach. A little more titanium white. And this can just kind of blend up into it a bit. Just blend right up into it like that. really windy outside. You can probably hear the wind just blowing, rattling things a little bit in here. Okay, we're going to continue this texture, just kind of working background and foreground since I'm painting a little more opaquely here. And uh, pretty soon we're going to start working on the form of the girl. So now let's uh, let's block in a little bit of the color of her hair. Even though she has blonde hair, it's going to look more of a brownish. I'll take some titanium white, mix this with raw umber dark, and add just a bit of ultramarine blue. A little more raw umber dark in there. And we're just going to block that in. Yeah, we need a little more ultramarine blue and a bit of alizarin crimson. And raw umber dark. You just have to keep balancing it out because I sometimes add a little too much of one color. Now we just uh, kind of block in the shape. I'm going to need a smaller brush for this. this round brush right here. We're just going to block in that shape of her head a little bit and just uh, endeavor to get that correct form. Okay, I'll take a little more umber dark titanium white and we just try to get a couple little patterns showing the top of her head here and now I want to block in some distinction between her arms and her legs, and her clothing. I'm going to take some titanium white, a little bit of raw sienna, Pyro red orange. Use that for the basis of some skin tones. Maybe a little more titanium white. 
and burnt sienna. All right, and we're going to have her complexion is pretty pale, so we want to make sure we get that suggested in there. And there's the knees, a little bit more amber dark. We'll just kind of blend this sand color into the skin tone color because it's kind of similar. We're going to use some raw umber dark um, to get the face color which is in shadow so it's all pretty dark right there. We'll also use this for the hair as well which is similar. Okay, we're going to use this same color, this shadow color for her ankles, feet, shadows on the feet. The nice thing about a painting like this is it can be just a start. You know, you put 30 minutes into it, you can decide to bring it further to completion if you want. Or it can just be a portrait study that you can base a larger, more complete painting off of. Let's add a little bit of alizarin crimson to this titanium white raw umber dark mix. Just feel like it needs to be a bit warmer, a little bit darker. Just gonna put that in right there. And we're just showing her hand. We got her two hands kind of clasped together there. It's a little bit of a shadow right here. Shadow under the arm. Now we wanna get some definition uh, for the knee. So we're going to have one leg there and the other leg on the other side. Just gonna wipe my brush off quick. I need to get a little bit of a lighter color here for this other leg. Okay, we need some Romber Dark and Alizarin Crimson again. Uh, just a bit of Ultramarine Blue as we work on the other foot, which is a little bit darker. I want to make sure I have this coming down correctly at the right angle. That little gap right there. Okay, let's get in the green for her clothing. I'm going to take some titanium white and we're going to need a little bit of phthalo blue for this actually. I have that on my palette. Titanium white, a little bit of phthalo blue, Indian yellow. That'll make a nice lime green color. Add a little bit more titanium white. And we're going to add this just to the back here for clothing. Maybe just a touch of raw sienna, just so it's not too chromatically intense. We'll just put that on the back. Maybe just to add a little bit of raw or dark and ultramarine blue, just to knock it down a bit. All right, that's good. And then we'll just fill this whole area in with this color. And we'll bring it up to about the area where we're gonna add some highlights. Okay, now let's do the highlights with uh, titanium white. A little bit of Indian yellow, so we have to go substantially lighter and more chromatically intense. So you don't want to just mix white with that greenish color. You need the yellow to warm it up. And then we're going to use phthalo blue again, just by itself. With that mixture, we're not going to add it to the other mix. We're not going to add ultramarine blue or 
raw umber dark or any other colors to it. We want it to be very chromatically intense so that it conveys the warmth of the sun. And now we add a couple little wrinkles moving away. Okay, use my detail brush and see if I can just refine this a little bit. Just want to blend that in a little bit there. And then we're going to use some titanium white just to get a sense of the, of the collar. So we have this collar here, which is titanium white. I use my detail brush for this. Let's really try to get kind of a thicker amount of paint on that, just so it really does what it needs to do. Here I think her sleeve should come down a little bit further what I can see. A bit of thicker paint there. And then uh, we're going to just add a couple little shadows with, uh, let's see, the darker skin tones, raw or dark, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, a little more ultramarine blue just kind of get a darker skin tone shadow color you can put in against her knees right there we'll just kind of blend that out to get a little bit of the ear we got, want to get a suggestion of the eyes where they might be the mouth the nose etc put in a little more detail for the hair Just bring the head out a little bit further to the back and then get this idea of the shadow for the collar of the clothing. And we'll bring this part of her back up a little higher right there. Okay, let's get a little bit of the detail for the area between her um, back and her legs. We put some ultramarine blue and a little bit of raw umber dark into this greenish skin tone with a little bit of raw sienna and then we'll use that color for these little wrinkles in here. So we use a less chromatically intense color to get these shadows for the green and that just makes sense. Put a couple little spots in here to suggest the wrinkles. Let it break up a little bit. It doesn't have to connect all the way there zoom in a little bit further here. Now we get some shadows going on and darken that area a little bit further. I add a shadow on the bottom area under the bottom of her thigh where she would be sitting. And then let's uh, block in the shadow on the sand. So we need some titanium white, ultramarine blue. We'll put that into the skin tone area here. A little more ultramarine blue. Make a nice kind of bluish gray color and just pop that in right there. Get a couple little deviations just to show that there's some sand texture here. has to be filled in and then uh, we're going to get a little bit of a shadow uh, coming from the sand castle that just will flow in like this we want that all to be that same kind of bluish color get a couple little spots here and then we'll blend it into the lighter part of the sand Add some titanium white to it. And let that blend out into the rest of it. Just like that. And 
and we just suggest kind of some little little spots where there's some lumpy sand that might have gotten spilled out you know kind of caked sand that kind of thing and we'll put in a couple little spots here as well Now I want to just add a little more attention to the face. Let's go back to that. So we're going to work on the hair a little bit more with this darker color. Bring this, uh, whoops, bring this kind of sideburn thing down a little. We have a little bit of a darker shadow right by the forehead. There's just a lot of nuances here. I might not have time to capture it within this format. I'll do as much as I can. These dark shadows here. Dark shadow on her feet. Okay, let's uh, get a little bit more texture here for the sand. We'll just uh, pop this in with some titanium white. Try to get something that works with everything. Kind of a warm, warm grayish tint. Add a little bit of matte medium. That's this clear acrylic that uh, allows you to blend in things a little better. We'll just kind of put in some glazes And again, a couple more areas of texture in the back. Now let's go in and put some, uh, some highlights on the sand. So we will uh, take a lighter color. We'll make that a little bit warmer in tone. Titanium white will just add it to this skin tone color, but it's gonna have more white in it, so it's not gonna look like a skin tone. And we just put that in. Just in a few key areas on the sand. It's almost gonna be white, actually, in order to be seen. So we just put that in, and that with the, the darker areas will really sell us on the idea of there being some footprints and little divots in the sand that you might expect. So we'll have a couple couple little spots back here. And a couple little spots there. And then we'll add a couple more spots here. And we got to have some highlights on the sand castle. Put that on the rightmost side because the light is coming from the right side. A couple spots here. Try to have some everywhere, but not too many. Otherwise it can get overdone. Let's kind of make this a lighter spot here. Add a little visual interest by making that lighter on the lower right corner. Getting a little bit of gradation on the top there into that grassy area. All right. I'm gonna go back to the skin tones a little bit and just darken this area 
darken this area of her knee up against her arm, just get a little more definition there. So I'll just put in a bit of shading right there to convey that sense of three dimensionality a little bit better. And we'll just darken that part of the arm and hand, give that more definition too. definition there. And then just to differentiate the um, hair color a little bit, I'm going to add some raw sienna to that with some raw umber dark. A little bit of raw sienna, raw umber dark. We're just going to put that in to give it some a little more of a golden tone there. We'll go back to the romber dark color, a bit of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. Spray the palette. I'll just try to get a bit more texture in the hair. Show some of her neck here, bring that down a little bit. Should be more of the neck showing. A little more of the neck showing. And I'm going to take some raw umber dark, ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson. I want to just define that neck area a bit more. Add some burnt sienna and just uh, fill this area in by her ear. And then that darker color just to show the, kind of the spot within the ear, the ear canal. And we'll just try to get a little bit of dimension on her face as quickly as we can within the time frame. And then just a darker spot to represent the eye if we can get that in there. And the lip. A little darker shadow right under where she's sitting. And then we'll blend that out into the rest of it, to that shadow area. If I can just maybe suggest her toes. With this limited time I have left. Timer will be come, going off any moment here. Let's try to get a little bit of the shadow on her on her feet there. All right. Well, that's where we're going to stop then for now. But I think I'll probably continue this. There's more I'd like to do, but. Uh, yeah, this is what we have for 30 minutes. Kind of a different painting. Um, way different than what I usually do. Just zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Yeah, just a little bit different than what I usually do. Uh, more challenging with the, you know, figure being shown and then also the background as well. But uh, I, I like how it turned out for. 30 minutes I can't complain you can always go back and tighten things up and add more to it it's just really fun to challenge yourself and see what you can do in that short amount of time all right so this is what we've got this is the 30 minute acrylic portrait completed 
And like I said, there's a lot more that could be done to it, but not bad for a 30 minute exercise. I do think I'm gonna add a little bit more to it um, after you know the video's done rolling here. Maybe I'll even record some bonus footage and put it up later. Um, but hey, this is a fun exercise. I would encourage you to give it a try. You can paint pretty much anything. You know, Of course, we're sticking with portraits as subject matter, but you can pretty much paint anything you want within that time frame. And so uh, I'd encourage you to give it a try. But if you haven't already, go ahead, check out my free PDF guide, Fix Muddy Skin Tones in Your Acrylic Portrait. Again, you can get that at realisticacrylic.com forward slash fix dash acrylic dash muddy dash uh, skin tones. And then I'll send that to you. You can print it off and it's a great reference guide. But hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Like this video, subscribe, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. And I look forward to seeing you in another episode of the 30-Minute Acrylic Portrait. God bless. We'll talk to you soon.